Welcome to Three Kitchens, a home cooking podcast. I'm Heather Dyer, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Aaron Walker. Hello. Hi, Aaron. And Sarah Somasundram. Hello, Sarah. Hi, hi. <laughs> How are you guys today? Good. Really good, thanks. I got my seed started this weekend. Nice. I'm excited about it. Nice. Uh, what did you get started, Sarah? I got I got tomatoes and, and peppers, and I, I got a couple of herbs going um, nothing sprouted as yet, but you know, I stare at them every day. Yes. <laughs> with love <laughs> and hope. You have to talk to them now from beyond the soil. Yes. Yes. And then I've got, <laughs> I, I cleaned out two pots. Erin, I, I used your husband's advice and I, I bleached out pots today, Ooh. like uh, planting pots. And uh, I'm going to be putting in my morning glory seeds into them very good those were so beautiful they are so mm. beautiful but the, you know they yeah. take a long time to start flowering mm. so I thought maybe I could give it a go and try them inside uh, yeah so wish me luck good luck yes I started mine I guess early because I've already got tomatoes and peppers popping up fantastic yeah yeah and it was fast wasn't it they well the tomatoes were pretty fat like faster than I expected the peppers have been slow and the paprik mm. have not come up yet okay even though I planted it all at the same time so I have no idea if maybe those and I planted all the seeds I had <laughs> so eh, they don't grow oh well I guess well, it's an experiment I'll make sure we plant some extra because we have not done our tomatoes and peppers yet uh but we planted our celery from seeds and our onions from seeds nice. right and you're planting extra because you're going to drop a whole bunch of those delicious bell peppers that you grow off on the doorstep <laughs> throughout the summer. We'll be planting more peppers and more tomatoes. I feel mm-hmm. like you can't have enough. Well, and you have that big greenhouse so you can grow more. Exactly. Yeah. And I have these really demanding friends. <laughs> <laughs> There's no more hints. It's just stated straight out. Yeah. Give us your produce and we will... Yeah. Gladly take it. Yeah, especially the bell peppers. And remember, you like me more than Heather, so I get more. (laughs) I'm just joking, Heather. You know what? I like um, red. I like the the red, yellow, orange stage of a pepper. Green, not my favorite. They actually make me feel a little bit ill. Yeah, I get indigestion from the green ones. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. So. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Enough of those hints. So, Heather. I hear that you've been playing with lemons. Well, I have not yet, but my plan is to do so. So not not playing so much (laughs) as preserving, (laughs) preserving lemons. So I thought we could talk about it, then I'm going to try it and we'll see how it turns out. So, well, I'm not exactly sure where the, when this came up for me, but um, I know a few years ago, I bought this big cast iron Dutch oven for camping it's the Ooh. kind of thing that you you heat up your briquettes, you put a certain number on the bottom, a certain number on the lid, and you let it slow cook like oh. all afternoon when you're out. Well, you can't leave it at the campsite, really. But while you're hanging around drinking beer, you cook, right? So right. Um, that sounds perfect. Yeah, I know, right? The, the first thing I made in it was a sort of um, chicken tagine sort of thing, which is like a stew. And I remember the recipe had preserved lemons in it. And I was like, well, I don't even know what those are. So I just used fresh lemon, which is good. Totally good. Can I ask, where is Mm -hmm. chicken tagine? Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah. What's the origin on that? Moroccan, North African. Oh. um, And the tagine is actually just the vessel. It's the pot, like an earthen, like a clay pot that you cook with a lid that you cook like a stew in basically. And it's kind of this long, it's like a long high lid, isn't it? Okay. I think there's different ones, but yeah, you know that one that, that looks sort of like it's pointy? Yeah. Like a funny shaped funnel, upside down funnel? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Essentially, my cast iron Dutch oven served the same kind of purpose. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. And so now a dish, if you see a dish called a tagine, it's essentially a stew that's intended to be cooked or historically has been cooked in a pot like that. Okay. So I, I've seen these recipes with preserved lemon and I've never actually even eaten one. And yet now I'm going to make some. <laughs> so, Sounds delicious. Um, so how do you preserve a lemon? 
Okay, so I was thinking, how do I preserve lemon, just like you've just said? And I still have Sarah's batch cookbook, which is all about preserving. And yes. I was like, I bet I can find out how in that book. And sure enough, there it is, which is such a great book, by the way. Yes, it is a good book. It's all kinds of uh, preserving. It's like, it's canning, it's dehydrating, it's fermenting, fermenting, turning things into powder, turning things into like, it's pres- preserving in all kinds of ways. And yeah. sure enough, they have a citrus uh, section, very different ways of preserving citrus fruit. And um, they have just a very small explanation of how to preserve lemons. And I've seen it elsewhere as well. So basically you're cut, you're cutting them into quarters, putting them into a jar, putting salt coarse salt and then filling it up with lemon juice so you're preserving it in salt and its own juice you put it on the counter you shake it up every day okay um i've also seen it called a lemon pickle but i'm not sure how it's a pickle when there's no there's no vinegar oh i see which i thought was kind of the definition of a pickle but perhaps i just don't know the definition of a pickle (laughs) oh that's a good point how is this supposed to change the taste of the lemon so I guess since I've never had one, have you guys ever eaten? Them? I've had preserved fruit, but I've never experienced preserved citrus ever. Okay, so apparently it makes it a more intense lemon flavor, mm. and you mm. and you can use the and you're using the whole thing. You're not you're not like peeling it or whatever. It's like the rind, the pith, right. the flesh of the fruit, the whole thing, and you would just take it out, chop it up, put it into whatever you're cooking or using it in Um, and you can also use the salt the salt that's in the jar you'd use it as you would any recipe but I imagine it's got a slightly different flavor to the salt even so you can use the salt that was exactly what I was going to ask because you said that they are sitting in in the lemon juice so does it dry out is that what the outcome is don't believe it so from (laughs) the It's so hard when I've never even, I've never had right. one. Um, it doesn't look dry to me. I okay. imagine it's because it's juice, like you're, you're filling it up with juice. It's like a brine more like, ah, right? Okay. So I don't believe it's going to be a dry piece of lemon. Right. Okay. But, but it would be dry enough that you can still use the salt. The salt's not dissolved. Right. So this will be interesting. We are going to find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. I, I am curious yeah. because I can't even picture it at this point. So curious. so I've seen pictures and some of them do look like a moist, like it does look like a soft, wet lemon. But mm-hmm. then, uh, but then when they say you can also use the salt, I'm thinking, well, how are you using the salt then? Do they maybe let the liquid evaporate after and use and keep the salt because if you let the liquid evaporate after you take the lemons out you would have the salt left behind this is this this is the scientist in Aaron yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a science experiment <laughs> we are just gonna have to find out and now okay so in the batch cookbook it says three or four days on the counter but all the okay. other one, I've, I've googled I've looked at numerous um how to's how to preserve these salt preserved lemons and most of them say two to three weeks so I'm thinking like three to four days what what are you going to get after like there it seems like there'll be a big difference make some extra ones and then keep tasting them as it goes along okay so yeah so what I was thinking was I'm going to use small jars and I'm going to make at least three so that the three of us can then Ah. test them out because I want your feedback as well I will be happy to. I always like it when sharing is mentioned. Yes. (laughs) And I'll just also add that I've seen also some recipes that um, where they add spice to it. So it's not just straight lemon and salt. They put chili or red pepper Mm. flakes or something like that, which I also thought would be interesting. I don't know if I'll do that initially or if I'll try it just straight lemon first and then see what we think. Um, but I thought that was interesting as well, because then you're making it a whole different, I imagine it'd be a whole different flavor then. Mm-hmm. I, I'm uh, reminded of this, um, a preserved lime that I remember coming up in a Persian recipe, and mm-hmm. I ended up 
finding it. I, I never actually bought it because it was just for one recipe and, and it was a whole like a bag full of them. Um, but it was completely dry. Hmm. And, uh, and apparently has very intense flavor for stews. Okay. Yeah. You kind of like throw it into the stew and then you take it out at the end oh, of the, the cooking kind of deal. Oh, yum. I would love that with lime. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see uh, how this, these lemons turn out. Yeah. So um, it seems to be used quite commonly in like grain dishes, like risotto, quinoa, couscous, like a salad. Right. You're chopping it up and putting it in that. You also see it in like the stews um, and soups and with roasted meat as well, like lamb or chicken mm. um, or fish. Mm-hmm. Like it's sliced with fish like you would a fresh lemon, but maybe it's more intense. I don't know. Right. Can you eat the whole preserved final product, rind and all? Does it have a consistent flavor? Because... Because the rind can be kind of bitter, right? We'll find out, Erin. We'll find out. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah. And I mean, it does say you use the whole thing. Although occasionally I've seen a recipe where you only use the rind. Ah. So um, I wonder if there is a, not just a difference. I would think the texture would be different, but also I wonder if the flavor is different interesting I don't know this is so this is an interesting one because none of us is familiar with this end product so the good thing is you won't know if I screw it up (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. Uh, unless we all hate it and then we're like (laughs) this is terrible when we all end up with botulism then we'll know <laughs> oh, no. okay now let me be clear there's no water bath this is not a sealed can it's just in a jar on the counter so yeah this is not there's I don't think I can screw it up that way <laughs> no it won't let's be not that go bad. there no <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kind of I'm hoping that it's good and that um you know I can make some of these sort of Moroccan inspired recipes because I really like those flavors I like that right. yeah me too cuisine from that part of the world and now it seems like more recently my kids are a bit more open to different foods and uh, like it seems like in the past few years where we've moved beyond where they'll actually eat a one pot dinner which is yes. like one of my favorites because like a stew or something because it's so much easier and now I think they might be more receptive and they do love citrus so mm-hmm. I'm hoping that's oh, going to be a family win as well. I'm oh, good. excited I, I by the so thought. And, and a friend win. Yes. And a yeah. friend win. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was going to also tell you, in batch, they also include a recipe that uses it. So I'm going to make the recipe as well. I'm going to make the lemons, and then we're gonna, I'm going to cook it in. Um, they have a chicken stew with salt-preserved lemons. And they say it's loosely inspired by North African cuisine. Nice. Ah. So... I hope that means that that the ingredients are things I have and not yeah. feathers of dodo birds and weird <laughs> friend things. <laughs> um, but it uses the it includes in the ingredients both the lemon and the salt separate as separate ingredients in the recipe. So I thought that would be good to try because it's using the whole yes. thing. Absolutely. And no waste. That's that's such a and a great concept, right? To add to your recipe. Oh, and I just the thought of lemony salt sounds I know. great. Yeah. I yeah. know. Doesn't that sound good? It sounds good. Salt with an extra flavor infused into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, maybe this can teach us how to infuse more things into our salt. Yeah. Bacon. As well, because bacon yeah. salt. Yeah. Have you ever had yeah. bacon salt? No. I'm so good. Oh. So good. You know how, um, you know, some people rim their uh, cocktails with, yeah, with a like salt. a Caesar or something. Yeah, oh, like yeah. a Caesar or a Bloody Mary or something like that. Um, bacon salt. Bacon salt. Oh, I wonder if this, if that's the use, because I just in passing saw um, a number of cocktails using these lemons. And one of the things was a Bloody Mary. And so I'm wondering if it's like to salt the rim. Uh Aha. You you have to look it up and then make it and then send it to us as well. Sounds like we need dinner and drinks. (laughs) 
Yes, when the weather's <laughs> nice, you can come sit on the deck and we will have preserved lemon themed <laughs> drinks. And Kate, you heard it, folks. Say the date and the time and I'll be there. Sounds great, Heather. Good luck. And we will be right back to find out if the recipe turned out. Are you also interested in preserving methods like canning, dehydrating, fermenting, and salting? You might want to check out the Batch Cookbook by Joel McCharles and Dana Harrison. You can make your own salted lemons. Hello, and welcome back to Three Kitchens. Heather, tell us how it went with preserving lemons. You've been working on this for a little while now. A while, yes. And I think I made no secret of the fact that I had no idea what I was aiming for, never having eaten a preserved lemon before. So I will admit I was concerned I might be discussing a fail today. (laughs) And I'm really, really happy to say we're not talking a fail. So (laughs) excellent. Good job. Yay. yay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Let me first tell you how I did it, what method I used. So I followed the instructions from the batch cookbook, which were, uh, and I may have said this before, but I'll just quickly say, so you quarter three lemons, you put them in a jar, you add the juice of one lemon and three quarter cups of salt. You tighten the lid, you give it a shake and you leave it on your counter and you give it a shake once a day. And apparently they keep for five to six months. I think you put them in the fridge after that and then they keep so you do have to keep them in the fridge uh yeah I've read conflicting things but it makes sense to me that you once it's opened and you're in and out of it it makes sense that you would keep it there I think it would last longer and depending on the temperature in your house too so after four days like they said three to four days I open that up and not knowing what to expect I was like well we're gonna see all I tasted was salt it was salt 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 all the way through the lemon tasted like salt the salt tasted like salt I was like well I don't think this is what I was hoping for (laughs) um or at least it didn't suit my palate like maybe that Mm. is it's still preserved as they said like it's still a preservation technique yeah Um, but it didn't taste like something I wanted to cook with sorry had the texture changed that much at that time it was a little bit chewy it wasn't like a raw lemon but it hadn't softened a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it was working. So uh, I kind of switched gears a little bit and went with a method that I'd also read. So there was kind of two methods. And this one I'd seen more commonly when I was kind of Googling this earlier. So this wasn't from the book? And this is more of a brine. So what you do the same thing, but instead of the juice of one lemon, you fill the jar up with lemon juice. Right. And then you close it and then you give it a shake every day and you leave it sit in the, out of the sun, but on the counter. And it ferments okay. in the lemon juice. So I switched gears. I did that. I topped up all the jars and I let them sit. And then after 10 days, I peeked in there again and they're much softer. And mm. while they were still salty for sure, it was much more balanced and I could actually taste the lemon and not just pure salt. So then I decided at that point after the 10 days that now I can plan to cook my recipe with them. And I gave you guys each a little jar. So before I get into the recipe, what did you think? Can I ask a question about the process of yes. fermentation? So you gave us this little jar. I now have one on my counter and I've dipped in it a few times. Every time I open and close it, it keeps overflowing. The lid's getting kind of gross. It's oh, hard to tighten no. on. My jar is not doing that. Okay. No, that I, I did put mine in the fridge. So I wonder, okay. because that will actually slow down the process. So I wonder if maybe you want to. I might go do that. I was going to say, did you have to wash the lids and stuff? Because I noticed that they're starting to, um, the acid is eating away at the metal. Right, right, right. Yeah. See, I, <laughs> hmm. Because they do burp and, and whatnot when they're fermenting, right? And they were kind of getting sticky on the outside, you had mentioned. Yeah, they were getting sticky and kind of crusty with salt. Erin, yeah. I'm just wondering if maybe you want to put it in a different container. Okay. I don't know. I'm just, when you said it, it seems to be kind of corroding the metal. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah. Like it's just, it's just where it, you can tell that it, the Bubbled. gases produced from fermentation are just kind of bubbling up on yeah. top. So I wasn't <laughs> sure if, did you change the lids daily or no, didn't need no, to. I didn't. Okay. 
And I noticed it on the top of the lid as soon as I brought it home. There was yeah. a little bit of corrosion and I was like, ooh, it's been, it's fermenting like you. It's almost a good sign to me when, when you see that because you know that things are bubbling. and Well, it's supposed to ferment. I mean, that's the idea. Yeah. So is preserving a form of fermentation? Well, I think the opposite. I think yeah. fermentation is a form of preserving. Preserving just oh, means okay. to make something last longer yeah. oh, out of its okay, season, beyond its season. You know, when people first started preserving, you know, lemons in this way, it would have been to make them last far beyond the season that they grew in so they could still use right. them in their recipes or travel farther with them or something, right? Right. Right, scurvy. Yeah. Scurvy. Yeah. <laughs> this would have been this would have been the the cure for scurvy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. I was blown away at the taste. And I think I'm definitely going to have a jar and start making these and keep one in my kitchen for sure. When you said you were salting lemons, I I just, I couldn't picture what this was going to taste like, right? Me either. (laughs) All I thought was, I thought back to my tequila days and I'm like, salt and lemon, I guess it could go well. But (laughs) what was shocking about it was when I tasted it, it's almost like the sourness from the lemons, it was gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, totally. it didn't taste yeah. sour. And so I know that you were talking about putting it in a recipe and I was trying to figure out what to do with it. And I did put a piece in a soup that I was making yesterday and I didn't really taste it yesterday, but I really tasted it today with the leftovers. Ooh! But what mm. I did was mm. I just started cutting little pieces and eating them. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I grew up eating dried preserved fruit a little bit different so it it tasted Mm -hmm. a lot like that and then at one point I'd eaten so much that my uh, mouth went numb (laughs) because I think I just (laughs) ate too much and I kept eating them though it didn't stop me (laughs) I loved it I think Mm. I'll uh I'll definitely make one of those preserved lemons and and keep it in my fridge and I might do one with a lime maybe who knows Mm -hmm. what that will taste like yeah yeah totally So I got this little jar from you. I got it home and I had never heard anything else that you could make preserved lemons in. So the first thing I did was Google, I preserved lemons, now what? And the second recipe that came up, I I think Google is out to get me. The second (laughs) recipe that came up was to make a potato salad with the lemon and the salt mixed into a mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know about my struggles with mayonnaise, go back and give that a listen. (laughs) I must be sick in the head. (laughs) Well, I did not think you were going to make mayo again so soon. Oh, I didn't think so either. And then I read this potato salad and I was chewing on a piece of your lemon because like you, Sarah, I just cut off pieces and was snacking Mm -hmm. on this last night. Mm -hmm. Oh, the flavor. Yeah, it was really good. Really bold. Yeah, very intense nice. and yummy. And I saw this potato salad and I knew I had to have it. And I knew I had to make a mayonnaise. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, the process didn't get any better. It was it was a pain in my ass. But I finally got it finished again this morning. And I took the lemon, I took a quarter of it and I put it in my mortar and I smushed it all up and then mixed it in. The flavor of this lemon that is in there it just it's like your whole face can taste it I don't know what oh, it is nice. it is I'd so, actually like to try that mm-hmm. it yeah. is so delicious uh I'm sending some of my mayonnaise to you guys because I'll be away Yay. for three days and Thank I need you. somebody to eat this because if this mayonnaise is not eaten I will cry many tears oh don't do that <laughs> we are always here to eat the good the good food yeah. that you make so take all your probiotics Sarah you got to eat this mayonnaise <laughs> yeah, because I as will. soon as you smell this and with the salt in there too, yum, 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 yum. Yeah. Yum. And don't forget you can use the salt itself, not just the lemon. You yeah. also can just dig that salt out of the jar and put it in, yeah. just use it as you would salt. The only, it's hard to sprinkle because <laughs> it's wet salt. You know what? I salted my water with it when I boiled my potatoes. Oh, smart. Mm. Yummy. I also took this mayonnaise and I had boiled up an extra egg from the potato salad that I was going to make. And I made an egg salad sandwich and put some more of this lemony mayo in there. And I don't know this, the mayonnaise, the lemony flavor. And then I put some chopped fresh green onions in there. And those three things together, I think you could just eat off of a spoon. Mm. Mm. I think I might actually change my, um, 
dinner menu today <laughs> and uh, and uh, do a potato salad and see mm. what else I can. <laughs> well, I could give you some ideas if you want. Yes. Some ideas. <laughs> so what, what did you make with it, it Heather? I want to hear about your chicken. My chicken stew. So I made uh, the recipe they had in the batch cookbook, right. which is called chicken stew with salt preserved lemons. I used thighs and drumsticks, bone in, skin on, squash, carrot, celery, mushrooms, onions, garlic, and mm. then the spices were cumin, rosemary, chili powder, mustard powder. So you brown everything, put it in a pot like you do with most uh, stews, and then cover it up and put it in the oven for an hour. So then after the hour, you remove like about a cup of the vegetables and you blend them up and put it back in to kind of thicken the stew. Mm. Oh, like sometimes you do with soup, you know, to like, yeah. Thicken right, it right, up. Right. yeah. So I took the vegetables and I added a, just a little splash of chicken broth. Cause it was kind of like, it was a little hard to blend in my mm-hmm. ninja thing. Mm-hmm. I added a little bit more lemon salt and Ooh. the taste of that pureed oh. vegetable. I, I could have drank it out of the, I almost did. I was like, <laughs> What the fuck is this? It's so good. Like, it is oh my so god. Good. It was like uh, one of the best things I've eaten in a while. And I so I pour oh. it back in and then I was like, you know, I've got the cup from the b- little blender and I'm like trying mm. to get the last of it out. I'm trying to eat it. Oh my god. <laughs> it was just oh, it was just so good so good um the vegetables were my favorite I have to say I wouldn't again make a chicken stew like this with skin on my chicken because Mm, you kind of got to pick it out it's kind of gross and then it gets really greasy too. greasy and I think Mm -hmm. it probably does add flavor Mm -hmm. but I don't like the texture of it yeah and I also don't like bones in the chicken in my food like I'm a little picky about I prefer to have a boneless piece of meat that, but that's just yeah. me. And again, I'm sure the flavor is much better with the bone, but yes. I find it a pain yeah. to eat around. Todd mm-hmm. just had it with like a couple of pieces in his bowl. He didn't, he's not as picky. He doesn't really care so much, right. but I found for me, I was then picking and it was just a pain in the butt. And I don't want to have to take the peel and the bone and the whole, I'm just lazy that way. So I wouldn't do that again. And honestly, the vegetables were the star. Oh. I said to my husband, if I could have just, if I had known, I'd have just made this. Is there such a thing as a vegetable stew? Because that's what this should be. This was. Why not? I'm sure yeah. the chicken gave it amazing flavor, but the vegetables just soaked up all of that. They tasted lemony and salty oh. and just like the mushrooms and the butternut squash oh. were like yes. the best. In fact, for lunch today, I reheated Man. without chicken. I just took all the rest of it and left the chicken <laughs> for maybe Todd will eat it tomorrow. I don't know. And I just <laughs> ate a big bowl of all the, the stew and vegetables that was left. That's what I had for lunch because it was so damn good. And so Batch uh, in the book, it recommended serving it with toast drizzled with thyme infused honey. So I made that up too. Um, I put the dried thyme. I toasted it in a dry pan, kind of pounded it a little bit and then mm-hmm. put it in a jar, covered it with honey, left it sitting in the sunny window for four days oh, and then okay. strained it with cheesecloth. And that was the honey you that did I strain it. Okay. shared yeah. with you yesterday. Okay. How yeah. long did it take to strain honey through cheesecloth? And was I... that a horrible, sticky process? It was sticky for <laughs> sure. I kept saying, ah, so I'm sticky. Everything was sticky. I put it from one jar to the other with the cloth. I thought it was pretty subtle. Would you say it was very subtle? So, yeah. And was this fresh thyme you used? Dry. And they say that fresh adds too much moisture into the honey. I don't know if ah, it would make a difference. Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't know how much difference it would make, honestly, because it's not yeah. in there a super long time. It's just a few days. Mm-hmm. But um, I did like whether it was thyme infused or not. I did like the honey with the stew. I thought it was a nice compliment to it yeah (laughs) I'm like kicking myself right now because I feel like I took out the the wrong meat to uh, (laughs) cook for a dinner you can do it another day I don't think I'm going to be satisfied with my dinner today (laughs) after this I definitely won't because I have no plan and it will be like chicken fingers or something because it's just me and the kids (laughs) you could make some fish fingers and then put your lemon on that too fish sticks there you go (laughs) you can Um, make a tartar sauce Oh yes, with the lemon, yeah. Mm-hmm. But not homemade mayo. I'm not. I'm not going there. No, no. Hey, if 
you'll have my jar by the end of today oh yeah oh that's right there you go you can maybe that'll that's what you can create it into oh so good um we all really loved it even the kids really liked it one kid now says he loved squash and i've never heard either of them <gasps> admit to liking squash before the other one said that's the squash good. was gross but you know i i can still consider it a 50 win. 50 is still yeah. a win in my books then the the toast with the honey is that just their take on it or is that i wonder if that's something that goes with that cuisine or or not sure that just, mm. uh, came out of their heads kind of good question right. it just says oh try it this way with right. this on the right. side okay. yeah i'll be looking for more ways to use these lemons yeah I yes. was really excited to hear that not only you guys had a chance to taste them, but you actually used them in something before we got to chat about it, which was kind well, of Well, I just ate them whole. <laughs> <laughs> that was my goal. I, I had to use them and eat them in something, and and now I can't stop. Yeah, it's good. I forgot when I was eating my leftover, I took some green olives and some <sighs> lemon and just did like a rough chop okay. and put olive oil over it and capers and just sort of mm. mashed it all up together and ate that on my bread with my stew mm. so so much salty goodness in there the capers oh. the olives the lemons I was like oh this is so good and I ended, ended up eating way too much bread along with all my <laughs> stew and now I'm, I had to go for a quick dog walk before we sat down here because I was so full <laughs> <laughs> I ate so much so that's another way you could just chop it up and put yeah, it on your so bread. I, there are a few things that, you know, in my pantry that I would say add that umami taste to foods. This, mm -hmm. I would say, is one of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely going to make a, a few a few jars. And this is a great mm -hmm. way to keep the lemons longer and use them mm. in a variety of different ways. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm right with you. I'm definitely going to be putting these in the constant rotation once yeah. these ones are gone. Because, oh, it. You know what? This would be great in a Caesar salad too, oh. like a Caesar dressing. Oh, absolutely! Don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not making more mayonnaise. No, I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> Just use the store bought stuff. And the mayonnaise I made for you guys this time is super stiff, so you'll probably mm. want to water it down a bit. Oh. Yeah, I saw the taste of a preserved lemon described as an older, wiser lemon, which I oh. thought was made sense because it it you lose some of that like sharp yeah. like you said the sour that sourness like you lose yeah. some of that like yeah. zing which feels yeah. like maybe the more youthful part of taste <laughs> so older and wiser like it's mellowed and it's kind of yeah. like it knows itself you know what I mean yeah. and it's salty yeah, yeah. it's a little salty <laughs> it knows who it is yes <laughs> And it's not afraid to show. It. I know I'm yeah. getting saltier the 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 uh, older I get, so that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. And it lingers, hangs around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'd be curious to see how the taste might change over time, because mm -hmm. they keep they keep for quite a long time. So what's it going? This is after what, like um, twenty days or not even? Okay, I can't remember exactly yeah. when I started, but fifteen twenty days. What's it going to taste like after? three months yeah I don't know I'm curious if they I don't know though they'll, they'll last that long <laughs> mine are not going to keep that and they're they're going to be finished yeah I'm going to do an extra jar and like stash it yeah that's once it's idea. fermented I'll stash yeah. it in the back of the fridge see what happens like leave it longer yeah. and see yes. what happens well I'm glad it was a success for a complete oh. unknown yeah to all of us I mean we had no idea mm -hmm. any of us mm. fermentation yeah, no, was is really a good. wonderful thing yeah. mm -hmm. I highly recommend that book thank you for lending it to me Sarah oh no problem you know if I ever could design my house that's what I would have like a whole room for fermentation and things like this my yeah. delicious science experiments because I love learning about it it's amazing what it does to the flavor Mm -hmm. and what did they call it like a summer kitchen you almost wish you could have like a separate little kitchen oh, where you yes. have all your stuff set up where you could do that and shelves to store all the jars of yeah. things and yeah well mm -hmm. thanks you guys I'm done that's all I've got to say about preserved thank lemons. you <laughs> well this is an easy recipe and I think an absolute essential in your kitchen so till Definitely. next time bye, bye. And now for the fine print. 
You can find pictures and recipe links on Instagram and Facebook at Three Kitchens Podcast. Feel free to leave us a comment or a suggestion for future episodes. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you like and subscribe, that helps more people find us. Mmm, that's the best chicken I've had in a long time.